What is up, everybody? Chris, the old ass retro gamer here, back for part two of the Sony PlayStation video game collection stream. Yes, I got it right. All out in one breath. I'm very proud of myself. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another one of my video game collection live streams. Chris, the old ass retro gamer here. Uh, today we're going to finish off the last half of my Sony PlayStation collection, PS1. Um, <clears throat> just like every one of these video game collection videos, I always talk about why I'm doing it, and it's not because I want to show off what I have and all that kind of stuff. I mean, one part of it is because it's extra content for the channel, which is great. And number two is, just in case something happens, I have a visual log of everything in my collection. I can say, hey, look, I actually had this in my hand on video. It's on the interwebs. Everything on the interwebs is true. So, there. And I just realized that uh, I don't have all of my games ready to talk about. Crap. They're just out of arm's reach. Shit. One second. <laughs> oh, man, Chris. You're dumb sometimes, you know that? There we go. Okay, anyway. And we're back. <laughs> so, let's get into it. Last time I went through all of the long box games in my collection, uh, which there are a fair, fair number, and up until the letter H. I finished off with the letter H, and now we're going to go I through Z. So, everyone ready? Let's go. All right. So, starting off with the letter I, and do I have any vi Yes, I do. One of the ones that was sitting right here. Okay, so we have The Incredible Hulk. Picked this up at Half Price Books not too long ago, actually. And it's okay. Um, it's a 3D action beat-em-up where you play as the Hulk. No big whoop. After uh, Endgame and all that, I was kind of like, I'm, I'm on a Marvel kick now. I want to get as many Marvel games as I possibly can. So, you see that in the wild, you get it. Uh, another license game, and this one is craptastic. Came out for the Saturn as well. It's Independence Day. ID4. Uh, yeah, based on the Roland Emmerich movie from 1996, where aliens invade and Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith save the day with a Mac. Who knew that the aliens were Mac compatible? Anyway, it's not a good game. You play as, I do believe, Will Smith's character in one of the jets from the end of the movie, and you're just going on missions, taking out aliens left and right, and eventually taking out the mothership at the end of the movie. I do not know if Randy Quaid comes and saves the day at the end. I've never played that far into the game. Probably don't plan to. <clears throat> uh, I picked, oh, actually, I got this from a friend at work. Uh, when I was in the uh, Sega Saturn live stream, I was talking about how a person at work uh, who was divorced found all of her ex-husband's video game stuff in her closet, wanted to get rid of it, handed it off to me just because she knew I was collecting. This was one of the games I got from her. Still haven't played it, though, uh, because I'm not a fan of the anime. I've never even seen the anime, so I can't say if it's any good or not. But it's Inuyasha, a feudal fairy tale. Uh, I guess her husband was a big fan of anime because he also had a lot of anime-inspired games in that bunch that she gave me from for other consoles. And it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with characters from the anime. I've never seen an episode, so... Can't say. What's up, Completionist? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Talked about this in my PlayStation 1 Diamond in the Rough video from a couple years ago. And, uh, actually, I think Radical Reggie went out and bought a copy of it because of... Because I talked about it, which is kind of cool. My I influenced somebody. No. <laughs> uh, in Cold Blood, uh, it's a Resident Evil-style survival horror game, but there's no horror in it. It is like a sci-fi thriller. Uh, tank controls, all that stuff, it's all in there. This one is a lot more trial and error than a regular Resident Evil game. I'll give you an example. At the beginning of the game, you infiltrate like this Russian uh, like base. And you're in disguise, and you go into the locker room. And I was trying to figure out what I needed to do. I was trying to get out, so I walked up to one of the soldiers to talk to them, and they turned around and shot me. So, yeah, fig trying to uh, figure out exactly what you need to do, like I said, is like a, pr a process. Uh, but it's it makes for a very good game, actually. You know, um, not everything's laid out for you. You need to do some exploration, figure out some puzzles and whatnot, and it is very fun. And the story is 
Very well told. And it's from a no-namer company. I mean, Dreamcatcher, I think they were making, like, games toward the end of the PS1's lifespan. Mostly. Let me see here. Uh, picked this up at, not, I picked this up while at the Midwest Gaming Classic. What's up, J-Love? Welcome, everybody. Let's give her a clap. Picked this up at the Midwest Gaming Classic two years ago, but not at the convention. I picked this up at the Make Sense Variety Store, just, a, like, a couple miles away from the convention center. And that's Incredible Crisis. This is, like, a bunch of mini games where you're an office worker in Japan, and there's, like, what was it, like, a disaster happened? It's about maintaining your sanity. <laughs> okay i just remember like there's it's, there was a mini game where you do like exercises in the morning you're doing jumping jacks and then like you end up falling out of the window of your part of your uh building where you work and it's it's just craziness it's really funny lurk mode activate <laughs> it's actually pretty funny uh i still don't have the first game in the series but i want to find it maybe i'll try to find it at the midwest gaming classic in 2020 we shall see but it's jumping flash the original one was a launch game for the playstation i i had it didn't get it at launch. I got it maybe a month after I picked up the uh, console. And it's okay. You play as a robot bunny. It's in the first person. You play as a robot bunny and you're jumping all over the place and there's enemies to fight and all that kind of stuff. It was pretty novel take on a first person shooter. Um, I really enjoyed it. But part two just kind of ups the ante a little bit and there's way more stuff to do and to see and the graphics have greatly been improved because let's face it, that was a first generation game. It was a launch title so it wasn't that, vi yeah, it wasn't that visually impressive back then either talked about the third game in this series in the last uh collection video and this is part two they're all over the map each game starts with a different word <laughs> but they're connected they all i mean they all have the title in it uh the main title in it somewhere it's just for some reason there's always something else getting in the way this is kagero deception 2 uh the sequel to tecmo's deception the third one is called deception 3 dark deception so they're kind of all over the alphabet remember kenna suckers kenna forever in our hearts Anyway, uh, <laughs> so like I was talking about with Dark Deception, uh, you play as the bad guy in these games, and you're and this one I do believe you're playing a witch, and people are coming from the nearby town to kill you. People have been hired to go to this castle that you live in to kill you, so you have to set traps all throughout your castle to trap and kill these people that are like you know bur trying to invade your pro your blah trying to invade your property <laughs> and the more people you kill the more xp you gain the better traps better weapons better everything you get eventually you get some magic tr tricks and stuff like that it's pretty cool it's fantastic i rented this game i want to say three times from the local video store i liked it so much because nobody actually had this for sale not even like the local best buy and the internet was not a thing back then so it's not like i could have just gone on to amazon and ordered a copy no i had to hunt this down eventually i did find a copy i think three or four towns away from me uh, and I did get it, and I played the living crap out of it. And this was one of the first games I was looking for when I got back into collecting. It's worth having. That's one of my favorite games for this console. Kingsfield 2, a uh, sequel to the original Kingsfield, which was in itself a uh, launch game from From Software, the people that make Dark Souls now. And it's a first-person, dungeon-crawly fantasy RPG. And all these games are like that. Uh, and it's very old school i mean everything looks like a triangle in this it's it's an early playstation one game what do you expect but it's very fun and it's kind of like the way the elder scrolls games became just way before that ever happened you know um morrowind and oblivion and skyrim and all that this is kind of like a precursor to that and it's kind of cool as like piece of history like oh we can see where that began even though it's completely different companies you can see that that started there and the people that were making the Elder Scrolls games are kind of like, hmm, that Kingsfield, they're onto something. Hmm. This is a piece of crap. That's called Largo Winch Commando SAR, SAR, whatever. Um, it's a third person action spy game, and it is really bad. <laughs> like, really bad. I didn't, I bought this for like three bucks at half price books, and didn't really know anything about it, but I was like, oh, look, it's like a, a spy game. That's kind of awesome. You know, neat. And get home, and then I take the weekly... Every week I take a picture of all the games that I have added to my collection that week. And when I took that picture at the end of the week, and people saw that I had this game in that picture, everyone was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why did you buy that piece of crap? And I'm like, I, I, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> and that's the only excuse I had. And that's the only excuse I'm still going to use. So get over it. Here we have Legend of Dragoon. Fantastic RPG. Or action RPG, more like it. Um, 
I didn't. I never beat it, but I have gotten quite far into it, and there's a good reason why people are still asking for a sequel to this because it is pretty awesome. And uh, I actually need to start this over. I started playing it when I first bought this copy, probably like four years ago, and then you know life happens, other games get in the way, and I moved on. But I've always wanted to go back to it, but I'm pretty sure that I will forget exactly what was going on in the story, so I'm just gonna start over. But I remember it being pretty amazing. And yes, either a remaster or a completely new game in the series. Just do it, Sony. Just do it. All right, here we go. I was talking about the 3D version of this game that I have in the long box last uh, stream. And it's awful. And they should have just done what this is right here in my hand. And that is Lemmings and Oh No More Lemmings. So I had 3D Lemmings where they tried to turn this into a 3D puzzle game with, you know, the little green-haired idiots that you have to guide to safety over and over and over again and it didn't work in 3d this is a compilation of the first game and the second game in the series and it's the way that they were originally it's a side or a side view like a 2d puzzle game or a platform puzzler really cool i like these games a lot i do not like it when it goes in 3d so, all right jay love i'll be waiting i'll be waiting Damn it, I just realized I didn't go and get a drink. <laughs> oh, and I left the game out. Shazbot. Okay, um, I should have talked about this in the Jays. Uh, Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. Like, I have a bunch of games that I haven't been able to fit on my shelf yet, so they're just stacked up because uh, I ran out of space on my CD shelf here. So I just have a whole bunch stacked up. The ones that I keep buying, the ones, the newest, eh, crap, I can't talk. The newest ones I've bought, I'm just stacking up on a shelf. Um, but Jackie Chan Stuntmaster, I got at the Midwest Gaming Classic this year, and... I've always wanted this game, never had it, and I'm a big fan of Jackie Chan. I have been ever since I saw Rumble in the Bronx, and it's cool. He voices his character in this. It doesn't really look like him. Everybody just looks like Popeye. They're bulky looking. The graphics are not good, but it plays really well. It's a beat em up in 3D where he plays Jackie Chan, and you can do all the crazy stunt type stuff that Jackie always does, and it's a charming story. Of course, Uncle, a grandfather, is uh, missing. Or getting gets kidnapped by gang or gangbangers, or Chinese gangs, and uh, you have to go rescue him, like in every other Jackie Chan movie. Something happens either to his uncle or his grandfather in those movies. It just doesn't pay to be Jackie Chan's relative at some point, I guess. Uh, this I talked about in my Diamonds in the Rough for the PlayStation One like, a couple years ago. Also, this is Martian Gothic. This is also a Resident Evil style survival horror game that takes place on Mars, and you have three characters. To play as, which is kind of a unique thing. I know when it comes to like Resident Evil 2, you had two characters, but there were separate games. You know, you had to play through the one person's game before you started with the other character. Here, you play as them simultaneously, and you can switch between them at certain points. And the twist is that you know there's three characters to play as. In the opening cinematic, you are told that only two of them survive. And you do not know which ones they are. So there's like this tension going on throughout the entire game that, okay, which one of these people is going to die? Can I actually keep that person alive and like negate that opening maybe? So it, in that aspect, it's really cool. It, the story is actually pretty cool. It's just the graphics and the voice acting in this game are, the graphics are okay. The, it's the voice acting mostly that kills it. The voice acting in this is absolutely awful. <laughs> it's, it's really, really bad. Uh, makes my eyes roll. The original Medal of Honor and Medal of Honor Underground, the sequel. First-person shooters, World War II. This kind of started off the whole World War II first-person shooter craze that's like it started on the PlayStation. And it kind of ended on, what is it, the PS3, Xbox 360, I guess? Um, yeah, because uh, Call of Duty 3 and all that came out on that console. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, these are the originals. And for the time, they're pretty fantastic. I remember... I picked this one up on a lark, and I was just kind of like, what, DreamWorks, they're making games now? That's Steven Spielberg's film company. Like, uh, okay. And I think it was like right after... I always thought that this was kind of connected to Schindler's List because of that. It's not. Um, but, yeah, it's a great first-person shooter. I highly recommend it. And then the sequel is even better. It just adds more options to it, and the multiplayer works way better. I think they came out like a year apart. Here we have Mega Man 8, the Anniversary Edition. So I never went past Mega Man 4 when it came to the consoles. Uh, Mega Man 4 was the last game that I bought back in the day in the series. And I bought Mega Man X when that first came out thinking it was going to be something different. And it was not. It was just another Mega Man game. 
And uh, it was because part four, the characters, or the robot masters, I think I'm being trolled. <laughs> Every single time someone asks me this, do you have Android Assault? Yes, I do. Go watch the Sega CD episode. Goodbye. Um, yeah, uh, but part four, I didn't like the robot masters. I thought they were starting to run out of ideas, so I just stopped playing. So I never did play Mega Man 8 back in the day, and I picked this up. I want to say at a half price books, like when I first got back into collecting and uh, I tried it out and I mean, yeah, it is still a regular Mega Man game, but it is all souped up now. The graphics are way better. The control has been tightened. It's now like got anime cutscenes and everything. It's absolutely nuts. So this is Mega Man to the next level and I love it. Okay, so these two I never thought I would own and I, for some reason, my superpower kicked in where I find people slipping. So, you ready for this? So we got Mega Man Legends and Mega Man Legends 2. Uh, I knew both of these games were really expensive because they are so well loved, people just don't want to sell them. And I never thought I'd ever have Mega Man Legends, and then I went to the exchange that's not too far from my place, and I found it for like 40 bucks. Okay. And then I want to say this was when uh, people play games, that uh, retro game store that I was always going to when it, uh, it had closed down last year, right before the Midwest Gaming Classic, and then right after this year's Midwest Gaming Classic, they reopened for one weekend because they wanted to, re to sell all the stock that they had left over when they shut down. And I had so much money. I brought a whole bunch of money with me. I didn't spend a whole lot there because it had been gutted. And uh, I went to the exchange again, and they had part two there, and I got this for $45. I normally figure these games are well over 100 and I was not willing to spend them on games that I'd never played before because I'd never played these back in the day. And uh, to find them that cheap, I was like, yeah. So I caught that store slipping, I guess. But they are uh, third-person 3D RPG adventure or action RPGs in the Mega Man universe. And that's awesome. And people have still are still asking for a third game in the series. It's probably never going to happen. Uh, I know they were starting one, and then they canceled it. But whatever. We have Men in Black, the series, Crash Down. This is a first-person shooter in the Men in Black universe, and that sounded really appealing to me, even though it is not the greatest game ever, but it's a licensed game, and you know how much I love licensed games. We have Metal Gear Solid. Uh, back in the day, I really wasn't all that interested in this because I owned the original Metal Gear for the NES, and I could not figure out what the hell to do in that game for the life of me. Uh, I didn't realize that was supposed to be like this stealth game. I was just like, it's a Konami game. I'm just going to go and shoot everything like in Contra. And that's not the point. But I didn't know that back in the day. Uh, I never really read anything about it. So when I heard that this was coming out, like I never even played Snake's Revenge because I was like, hell with that. So when this came out, I was kind of like, eh. And then I started reading reviews about it. And people started telling me about it that had bought the game and were like, you know, personal friends of mine were like, God damn, dude, you got to try it. It's fantastic. And I was like, right, fine. So I picked it up and... Yeah, I was calling out of work a couple of times just so I could play this. <laughs> no shit. Uh, I was so entranced by this game and just the way it worked and everything with the stealth. And like when you're fighting Psycho Mantis and you got to like unplug the controller and plug it into port two because he like shuts down port one. It is nuts. And that final battle, holy crap. This game is amazing. I was so thrilled about it. And then like the sequels showed up and started confusing the hell out of me. <laughs> But I did also pick up, back in the day, Metal Gear Solid VR missions. I know a lot of my friends were not interested in this at all because, like, it's not a full game. It's not a real Metal Gear game. It's just a bunch of, like, you know, little mini-mission things. It's not like, a, there's no story. I don't care. The game is so much fun, I wanted to play that because it's still more in that Metal Gear universe. And I wanted it, and I love it, and I still love it to this day. I actually got this for free. I uh, bought a bunch of games off of a friend on Facebook, and he threw this in for free because I had mentioned that I was still looking for it which was awesome. I like free things. Doesn't everybody? We have Mission Impossible. This also came out on the uh, Nintendo 64, but I don't know if they're the exact same game. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of like part Mission Impossible the movie and part something completely different. It just kind of throws in stuff from the movie just because it can. And that's not to say it's a bad game. It's okay. It's another like Metal Gear, a wannabe Metal Gear solid type game. It's all stealthy and putting masks on and getting past guards and covering your tracks it's fun but it is a little clunky all right we're getting into weird territory now i'll do this one first no i'll do this okay so we got mortal kombat mythologies sub-zero <laughs> you're welcome 
Um, everyone hates this game. I don't. Uh, yeah, the controls kind of stink. And some of the platforming is absolutely beyond frustrating. Uh, that's design. But the reason I like this so much is because it expanded the Mortal Kombat universe. And me being a huge Mortal Kombat fan, I'm a huge fanboy, I really appreciated that. And it like kind of showed you new characters and new aspects of like Outworld and all that kind of stuff and the Lin Kuei and everything. You know, stuff that you weren't getting anywhere else. That I really, really latched onto this game. And I put up with the fact that the game itself is not all that great. And there's live action cutscenes that feature Richard Divizio, who plays Kano in the Mortal Kombat games. He plays um, Quan Chi in here, and John Turk, I think, is the guy who's been pl who'd played Mortal or he played Sub Zero in Part Three. Uh, he's the one who was playing Sub Zero here, and like a lot of new characters show up. I know Tremors in here, and he ended up being in Mortal Kombat X, uh, and uh, a couple others. I can't remember if it was scarlet was in this or not but whatever but other characters you know from the franchise make appearances and whatnot and it is really really cool and i appreciate it like i said for expanding the universe of mortal kombat and then mortal kombat special forces shows up and ruins everything so i guess the whole idea was in between the numbered sequels for the mortal kombat games there would be these spin-offs kind of like the way the star wars movies are working nowadays you're gonna get a numbered sequel which is going to stop at part nine obviously you get a numbered sequel and you get a spinoff a numbered sequel and spinoff that was i guess the idea with these mortal kombat games and sub-zero they got some criticism obviously because the controls and the uh platforming were not that great uh but they took that one step further and just threw out mortal kombat special forces where this time it's all about jacks and it's a 3d beat em up with some dungeon crawling elements and it is absolutely awful everything about it is crap the controls are crap the graphics are crap everything it looks and it sounds and it plays like garbage and it's like what are you guys doing are you trying to kill your franchise just when it's like taking off i guess so thankfully that didn't happen and then we have mortal kombat trilogy which is i think this is the one that's kind of glitch tastic uh the one that i think the greatest hits version is the one where they fixed everything don't forget, back in the day, we didn't have DLC and patches and stuff like that for games. You had to, like, if you were to buy the game in a later release, there was usually some patches been applied to it. <laughs> uh, but this is Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 all combined into one game. All those characters in one. Um, does it work great? Sure, it works okay. Uh, yeah, there's load times and stuff when you're doing some certain moves and certain fatalities. They added brutalities into this, which are really stupid <laughs> and, like... Uh, what was the other... They added something else into here, too, didn't they? Yeah, Brutalities. The Aggressor Combat thing and all that, yeah. Um, it's okay, but it uses the moveset and the control scheme of Mortal Kombat 2, and I'm not a fan of Mortal Kombat... Or, sorry, Mortal Kombat 3. And I'm not a fan of Mortal Kombat 3 with the run button and all that crap. So, you play as a character from Mortal Kombat 2 or 1, and it's like, what is happening? Like, this shouldn't be working. But they filmed some new footage with new actors. They brought Johnny Cage back into this. So there's like a new person playing Johnny Cage because Daniel Pacina had been fired at this point in time. So it's kind of weird playing as somebody who isn't John or, uh, Daniel Pacina. Whatever. Shot happens. Let's see here. MTV Music Generator. I played the ever-loving crap out of this back in the day. And for some reason when I bought this, it came in a single jewel case when i bought this back in the day it came in a double jewel case because the manual is pretty thick <laughs> it is only one disc but the cool thing about this game is it's make your own music tracks and you can sample cds you can only sample i think like seven seconds worth of a cd or something like that and i did that with almost every song i made an album's worth of music with this and i had a mini disc player back then and I had that going, I had my PlayStation hooked up through my mini disc player in case I wanted to record any music. And I ended up making an actual album of my own on mini disc from all the songs that I made here. And they were usually themed after movies. I made one based on Moonraker, the James Bond movie. I made one based on the X-Files, one on Fifth Element, one on Tomb Raider. The only, when I ended up buying the PC version of this, um, the only one that I recreated, I only recreated two songs. I recreated the Moonraker song and the, the Tomb Raider song. And I actually still have them on my hard drive. So if everyone wants to, anyone wants to hear them, let me know and I'll send it your way. Uh, but I played this for probably a year. 
it was just it brought out my creativity make your own songs take samples that are inside the game already mix them together all you know we can alter them in certain ways and make a song and i i made probably like 18 songs worth of stuff uh the mummy based on the brendan fraser remake from 1999 and i picked this up at uh, the game game dude in la when i visited my brother i think i picked this up the first year that i went to la so that's probably 2016 i want to say um, and it's a 3D uh, third-person action game or adventure game also where you play as Brendan Fraser and you're going through all the uh, catacombs and everything. And, yeah, it kind of recreates the stuff from the game from the movie. Not very well, but it's actually a pretty decent game. Uh, this is Nanotech Warrior. This one is kind of like... I'm trying to com What can I compare it to? Tempest, I guess? Maybe a little bit of Stun Runner. Uh, but he plays this ship and you're going through tunnels. Sometimes they're concave, sometimes they're convex. It's really kind of cool. It's psychedelic. It'll make your eyeballs bleed day glow colors. And it's kind of hard to follow at times, but it is actually pretty cool and has a very awesome soundtrack. Uh, I still don't know what to think of this one. It says from the creators of Tomb Raider, but it's... Mm. Uh, Ninja Shadow of Darkness. It's a uh, 3D ninja game. Kind of stealthy. Uh, trying to be like Metal Gear with a ninja. And in some aspects it's good, in some aspects it's really bad. It's actually, the controls are actually kind of clunky, and I'm not really a fan. But it's cool to have. And here we have another game that's very similar to Nanotech Warrior. We have N2O Nitrous Oxide. This is like if you were to take Wipeout and Stun Runner and like a whole bunch of tabs of acid. And like, seriously, you look at the back of this, and you tell me if you can see what is going on in any of those. You can kind of see a ship. But it's a 3D racing game, kind of like F-Zero, you know, wipe out, you're going into the screen, and it's just crazy psychedelic craft just flying at you constantly. It's pretty cool, but the the uh, environments are very distracting. Desert, or, uh, sorry, Nuclear Strike, the sequel to Soviet Strike. Okay, so, I think, it's, I always thought it was kind of funny how, when these Strike games come out, the newest one says it's a sequel to the previous game, so you know what order these go in. It, there's Desert Strike, and then when you get Jungle Strike, Jungle Strike says it's the sequel to, to Desert Strike. When you get Urban Strike, it says it's the sequel to, to uh, Jungle Strike. It's just really weird. So Soviet Strike is the one that came before this, and Soviet Strike is the direct sequel to Urban Strike. Got it? Good. More helicopter shenanigans in an isometric view, this time in 3D. And this time you can play as a Huey, a Hovercraft, a Comanche, a Harrier, and an Apache. So more than one vehicle, thankfully, which is good. And, uh, were there songs in here that were licensed? I don't think so. No, but this one has live-action cutscenes. So, yay. And here's one of my favorite franchises. We have Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, and Oddworld, Abe's Exodus. I absolutely love these games. These are the, uh, what are they called? Cinematic platformers, I guess, like, uh, Prince of Persia, the original Prince of Persia. Uh, and you play as Abe, who is this Modukan, I guess, they were, I can't remember what they were called. But whatever. He, he finds out that the place where he works is actually turning his people into food for other races. And he ain't having that, so he leads a revolt. And it's really funny. Abe is absolutely adorable, the sounds he makes and all that. And the platforming is really, really fun. Some of the puzzles are very challenging, and I really enjoy it. And then we have the sequel, Abe's Odyssey, where he has been exiled and... Or sorry, Abe's Exodus, where he's been exiled, obviously. And the revolt continues. And this one is so big, it's not on two discs. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. It is on two discs. I forgot. Uh, fantastic series. Uh, we never got another Abe game in the series. The Oddworld series continued, but it focused on other characters. We got uh, Munch's Odyssey, which is a character that works at the... He's one of the uh, races of characters that works at the meat plant... But he's one of the bad guys, and it's like he has like a turn of a uh, turn or change of heart. And then you have uh, Stranger's Wrath, which is a first-person shooter. What else? But it's a great series. I wish they'd bring that back. That was actually one of the cons the uh, the franchises that I talked about in my franchises that need to return. Here we have ODT, Escape, or Die Trying. Cleverness. Uh, another Cygnosis game. This is a third-person. Uh, sort of adventure beat em up style game. It's okay. I have played it briefly. Um, it's like one of those, like, I always, I was saying in my Cygnosis Quest video that 
Psygnosis was very hit or miss for me at the beginning, uh, when I would just buy a game before I started collecting their games specifically, that their games were either, like, really, really good or really kind of, like, like below mediocre. Like, they were, they were either awesome or they weren't. And ODT is one of the ones that's in the middle. Excuse me. There's another one coming up that's like that, too. Here we have Omega Boost, which is now, like, kind of a pretty pricey game, but... I always kept, when I had to sell all my games in 2011, when I lost my job, this is one of the ones that I refused to sell because I like playing it so much. And it is like playing Star Fox or Panzer Dragoon, but you play as this mech in outer space, and you're just blowing shit up. And it is fantastic. Super fun. The controls are fantastic. I did not want to get rid of that game because I still enjoyed playing it. Here's another game that I talked about in my uh, Diamonds in the Rough for the PS1. And if you have not played this game, I highly recommend you go and pick up a copy. It is dirt cheap. But it is awesome. It is called One. This is a 3D action run and gun. And uh, you play as this character has been experimented on. His arm has been replaced with like this metal arm that is a gun. And it punches people so hard that they explode. <laughs> but it's like playing a Michael Bay action movie. There's always something going on. The first thing that happens in the game is when you escape from the place where you've been altered, you are running along a path... And there are windows lining one of the uh, one of the walls, and a helicopter comes and starts shooting at you, and you are running away from this helicopter that is like trying to shoot you, and there's debris flying everywhere. It is absolutely fantastic. It is like a nonstop action game, and I highly recommend this one. Nobody ever talks about it. It's great. Uh, here we have Overblood, a 3D sci-fi adventure. Uh, this one is a third-person sci-fi action adventure type game it's okay it's kind of like trying to be resident evil ask but it's not scary it's just kind of like mm. uh, i think this is the same people that made uh, in cold blood uh dreamcatcher released in cold blood by the same company that made that develop this and it's okay you know everyone's everyone's yeah once resident evil hit everyone was trying to copy that whole res or uh survival horror thing so every single company, you could you could tell every single company released one at some point during the PlayStation 1 era. Here we have something simple that's just Pac-Man World, uh, 3D Pac-Man game. Okay, I think I got it for a buck and a half at uh, people, or at uh, Half Price Books. Classic, Parappa the Rapper. Uh, this game is what my brother put it. My brother watched me play it silently. He like I left my door to my bedroom open uh, back when I was still living at my parents' house, and I was playing this, and my brother came out of the shitter, which was right behind my bedroom, came out of the shitter, stood in my doorway, and watched me play this for a good 10 minutes before saying anything, and then I had beat, I think, two songs, and when, I, when it was over, I turned around, because I could tell someone was behind me, I turned around, he looks at me, he goes, this is the fatty boom baddie of video games, and then just walked away. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a rhythm game, I love rhythm games, you play as this little beagle character who's trying to go out on a date, and things are constantly getting in his way, he needs to get a driver's license, he needs to get gifts for her, he needs to prove that he's a worthy, uh, person to date i can't remember what her name is daisy or whatever it is um and the songs are super catchy and they're sung by people who are like imitating other uh like singers in hip-hop like one sounds like shaggy one sounds like queen latifah <laughs> it's pretty cool um and it's fantastic and when i i have the remaster of this for the ps4 and i streamed it on twitch and that is probably the biggest twitch stream i've ever done like everybody showed up for that because parappa the rapper brings the boys to the yard and the girls it's a universal thing. Here we have Parasite Eve and Parasite Eve 2. Uh, this is when Squaresoft was trying to experiment. They were releasing... No, they were known for releasing RPGs. Uh, and all of a sudden they released, you know, Einhander, which is a, a shmup. And then they released uh, uh, Brave Fencer Musashi and Bushido Blade, which was a fighting game. And then these came out. Well, the first one, obviously, first. Uh, but yeah, these are RPGs. Uh, but they're like sci-fi horror RPGs, and they are twisted and sick, especially the first one, the whole mitochondria thing. Some of the crap that goes on in this game, are, it's just beyond twisted. The ending is bizarre beyond belief. But the story's interesting, and the characters are likable. They kind of ruined it in part two, because it was kind of moving away from the whole RPG aspect and trying to be like an action survival horror game. And mm, Pitfall 3D, Beyond the Jungle, this is... Obviously, people trying to turn everything 3D. That's what happened on the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 and the Saturn. Let's just take what were 2D franchises and then upgrade them into 3D. And not all the time it worked. And it's not all that great here. Because 
you know, what's one of the main things you do in the pitfall games? You're swinging from vines and stuff. <laughs> Try doing that in this without falling to your death over and over again. Uh, but it works in some areas. It doesn't in others. It's not terrible. It, it could have been a lot better. Probably if they put another year of development into it. Uh, we have Populous, the beginning. Uh, I never played any of the Populous games on the... Well, the first one came out on the Genesis. And I do believe on the place, on the uh, Super Nintendo also. Never played any of them. I watched someone play the Genesis one. That was when I first saw the Genesis being played was... I watched somebody play Populous. And it was interesting, but I was just kind of like, eh. It's kind of too slow for me. And then I found the 3D version of it at Half Price Books for like 5 bucks. So I picked it up. And it is really complicated. <laughs> it's, it's almost like playing a Civilization game. And it's weird, but it's not too bad. I, I just need to put more time into learning how it works. Uh, this I bought because Cygnosis. Uh, this is called... It's got a long name too. Professional Underground League of Pain. So if you were to take like basketball, football, and highlight and mix them together, that's what you got here. So it's like uh, Mutant League football type of game. And I'm not really into sports games, and even though this is like a sci-fi twist to it, I still kind of, yeah, have a hard time trying to get into that one. But it's Cygnosis, so I had to have it. Uh, here we have Project Overkill by Konami, and this one is pretty cool. Um, It's an isometric action shooter, like run and gun type thing, and it kind of like on the surface will remind you of uh, Syndicate. But it's a little more action-oriented than Syndicate. It's actually pretty fun. I like it a lot. And it is bloody as hell. I mean, if you look at those pictures, there's always someone's blood splashing across something. It's really fun. I like that one a lot. Here we have another Cygnosis game. We have Cyberdeck. This is sort of like if you were to take uh, Wipeout, which was another Cygnosis game, and have it with, instead of cars, futuristic cars, you have kids on, on hoverboards. So it's a skateboarding hoverboard skateboarding racing game and it's okay and it's a decent soundtrack though so i can't complain too much but it's all right it could have been a lot better and i missed some games again because i'm a dumbass okay you guys ready for this so when i got back into collecting yeah, i for totally forgot to talk about these because i'm dumb um so when i got back into collecting i there were certain games that I knew I would not be able to get right away that I wanted, but I knew that they had become extremely pricey. The reason I sold these games back in the day when I owned them originally was because they were pricey even back in the 90s. And I was like, I don't really play these anymore. I could get a lot of money for these and then buy more games that I want to play now. So that was kind of my mindset back then. Nowadays, I wouldn't do that to save my life. But when I got back into collecting, I was like, I really want to own these games again. But, you know, just like back in the day, they are worth a lot of money. And... I found people slipping again. Same store where I found those two Mega Man Legends games. So I had a whole... I used to have a gigantic CD collection. And then I started to realize that... I, I have all those CDs of mine already ripped onto my computer digitally. Why do I keep the CDs? So I decided to sell... Print, what was it? Like 95% of my CD collection. I kept certain ones that were sentimental to me. But took them over to the exchange and found these there. Lunar Silver Star Story Complete... And Lunar Silver Star, or Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete. I got these at this exact same time. So, I always thought that, like, well, I'd been looking into it, actually. Online, uh, Lunar 1 was going for, like, uh, maybe $90 to $100. And Lunar 2 was going for, like, 95 between the 95 and 110 So, I sell these CDs. They tell me how much they're going to give me. And I got a lot of money for all these CDs. Because a lot of them were kind of worth some money. Didn't care anymore. I just didn't want them. And go to look at their game section. And I'm like, holy shit, they got both of these here. One was like $55 and the other was $65. This was $55. This was $65. And I go, you know what? Just give me those two things and I'm good. And we did that and great. The only thing was they didn't tell me that the first game was not completely complete. It didn't come with the medallion. Or it didn't, it didn't come with the, the necklace thing. The amulet. So I ended up having to buy that separately, and then I realized that the amulet was supposed to come in a bag. I was like, yeah, didn't that come in a pouch back in the day? And I ended up having to buy the pouch separately. Now it's complete. But these are RPGs that originated on the Sega CD. They just got completely remastered and put on the uh, original PlayStation. And these come with some awesome things. So, number one, the box itself opens up to tell you more about the game. If you've already played it like I did on the Sega CD, you knew what was up. 
and on the inside you got oh no it was lunar 2 that had the amulet that i needed to buy you have this gigantic art book that serves as a manual and an art book at the same time just like the ark the lad collection fantastic and the game itself which is what i'd normally see now when i go out shopping for you know going game hunting and all that all i find is the standalone you know the jewel case i don't see the outer box the manual or anything it's just this and it comes with all four discs uh three of them are the game one of them is a soundtrack and it also comes with a cloth map pretty cool all about it uh, i used to have this for the sega cd and i loved it but back then i didn't have my sega cd anymore because i'd gotten rid of it to buy a 3do so when i saw that this came out for the ps1 i jumped on it because i absolutely loved this game Oops. so there you go lunar one lunar two is the one that's like huge look how wide that thing is god damn This one, too, also opens up, tells you a little bit more about the game, uh, tells you exactly what's in it, which is why I didn't know to look for the stupid amulet. But oh, look at all that. <laughs> this, is, this is nuts. And the fact that I actually found a box protector for both of these games, they're actually making specific ones just for one and two, but not one for um arc the lad the guy refused to do that when i asked him like well you got ones for lunar one and two why don't you have one for arc the lad he goes oh, arc the lad isn't as popular as lunar so nah. <laughs> so you got the soundtrack here come on get out of there what is wrong with you it is like stuck in there okay whatever you got the soundtrack you got the game and this, too, is what I see all over the place now whenever I go out. So this is on four discs because the game is pretty damn big. comes with another art book, which also is the manual. In full color, awesome. And it's hardbound with that little ribbon so you can mark your place. And it also comes with, like, this tchotchkes container. And that's where you have your map. You have, like, these little... Like cardboard character stand things, which serve absolutely no purpose. And the medallion, which I had to buy separately. So that is pretty cool, I must say. Still trying to figure out what's going on with this soundtrack. Why won't you let go of this CD? Why don't I want to listen to it, huh? Get in there. So, yeah, these are fantastic RPGs. Uh, a lot of uh, really cool music. The first one especially has like a lot of songs in it. And I remember like my friends and I, my friend Charlie and I both had this game. And we, we loved the music in the game. We absolutely thought it was fantastic. Back on with the, alpha, or the alphabet. So, back, so, we just ended with Cyberdeck, obviously. And now we're going on to Quake 3, port of a PC game. First person shooter, all polygons and not uh, 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 sprites. And it's fantastic. Although this one doesn't have the music by Trent Reznor. Eh, that was the first game. Uh, but it's fantastic. It's a really awesome, dark first-person shooter with awesome weaponry and villains and everything and the bad guys that you fight. I love it. Quake's one of my favorite things ever. Doom is awesome, too, but Quake 2... Quake 3 is one where it went all multiplayer crazy. All right, here we have... Shit, I don't have my phone. Damn it, so I can't really tell you what the name of it is. But, oh yeah, I can. <laughs> Day. Some of it's in English. Uh, this is Ranma One Half Battle Renaissance. So Ranma One Half games, I have a bunch of them for the Super Famicom and one for the Super Nintendo. And since the anime Ranma One Half is, you know, it all revolves around martial arts. Obviously, these games are all going to be fighting games. So we have a one-on-one -on -one fighting game like Street Fighter with Ranma characters. This time in 3D instead of with uh, sprites. So you can see uh, Genma, the panda, fighting. I do believe that's Shampoo. Yep. It's okay. Uh, I picked this up at People Play Games before they shut down. Uh, and they had it mixed in with their regular PS1 games. Usually they had all the uh, import stuff separated. But for some reason that was mixed in with all of the, imp the uh, regular PS1 stuff. So, whatever. 
Really glad that I picked that one up because it's actually not too bad. Here we have another one of the Cygnosis games and their sister company, Traveler's Tales. This is Rascal. It's a 3D platformer with a pseudo wannabe mascot. This like 90s hip kid, you know, a kid with two. That was a whole thing about in the 90s. And it's okay. It's trying to be Mario 64. It's not. <laughs> Next up, we have RC Revenge. This is a uh, race car, or sorry, a uh, remote control racing game, a remote control car racing game. There's boats and trucks and all this other kind of stuff in it. It's okay. It's trying to be like RC Pro-Am in 3D, but it's not the greatest ever. There's actually a sequel to that that came out on like the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. All right. Where are the rest of you? Do I not have them? Could have sworn I did. Something's up. Oh, it's because I have the long box. I'm losing my goddamn mind. Okay, I thought I had the first game in the series. I'm like, wait, I do. It's the long box. That's why I don't have it. But I should get the uh, uh, the director's cut version just because. But Resident Evil 2, one of the best survival horror games ever. Just got a recent uh, remaster on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. It's awesome. Played. I've almost played... I played through one storyline and got stuck in another because uh, I didn't have enough ammo at one point and I couldn't continue. But awesome game. Uh, I was on the Cartridge Club podcast last Halloween talking about this game with uh, Musty Hobbit and it's Rocket Sauce and one other person. I can't remember who. But fantastic. This is the one that upped the bar of what the first one was. This was also a very troubled production. Uh, they were about halfway through the development of Part 2 and they scrapped it completely and started over, I guess because it was too much like the original game. And they wanted to do something different. And they came up with the whole two different character aspect. And the best thing about this is it all depends on the order in which you play the game. One disc is dedicated to Leon. One disc is dedicated to Claire. And if you play as Leon first and Claire second, you'll, the story will progress in one way. If you do it the opposite way, the story progresses in a totally different way, which is kind of awesome. Rhapsody, a musical adventure. This is an RPG by Atlas that is all about music, obviously. It's on two discs. Ow. Uh, and the second disc is uh, the soundtrack. And it's okay. This one is a little too... Hey, you know, I like I like my RPGs to be dark. <laughs> that one is a little too... Uh, uh, what's the word? Positive? No? Uplifting, maybe? <laughs> still haven't opened this, and I bought this like years and years ago, and I still haven't opened it, but I had this back in the day, and I absolutely love it, so I know that I made a good decision buying it. This is Rising Xan, the Samurai Gunman. Uh, this is the most bizarre game ever, but it is awesome. It is like a 3D beat-em-up where you play as like a samurai cowboy who has a sword and a gun, and you can combo the two of them together in awesome ways. It is bloody as hell. It is absolutely fantastic. I love this game. I had it back in the day when I was, you know, the original PlayStation was still a thing. And I loved it. And I found it, like, not too long after I got back into collecting. Brand spanking new for dirt cheap. Which shocked the hell out of me. Because it's like, it's not a common game. You would think it would be expensive, but it's not. Maybe it is now. I haven't looked. So here we have RPG Maker. Picked this one up at, at uh, Half Price Books for, I think, a whopping 10 bucks. And I had this one back in the day, but I did not have... Like, I figured this would have been as easy to pick up and use as MTV Music Generator. So I'm like, oh, cool, I can make my own RPG, and I'll just figure it out as I go. No, you really need to, like, study this manual <laughs> and get all the nuances of it, because otherwise your game is just not going to be good. Uh, you can use stock assets. You can make your own assets. Uh, you know, with a, They have, like, a little drawing uh, program in there. Uh, you make your own dungeons, you make your own story, but you have to enter everything with the controller. There's no keyboard, you know, with this thing. So it takes forever, and I honestly was just kind of like, yeah, this is taking too long. I'll put you aside. And I never actually used it. It's sad, because I probably could have come up with something pretty cool, just like I did with MTV Music Generator. But the new ones are still coming out. I remember I in a pickup video, when I picked up, I think it was RPG Maker 2, I already had three, I had the original... I thought that my subset of those was complete. Turns out they're still going. And I didn't know about it. There was one that came out for the 3DS, and now there's one coming out for the PS4 and the Xbox One. And me and Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming both pre-ordered the one for the Xbox One. And we're talking about each of us will make a game with it and then send it to the other person and play each other's RPGs. Which will be pretty cool. 
uh, Road Rash 3D. This is just a port of the 3DO Road Rash game. And they improved a lot. They improved the graphics. They improved this, the uh, the controls a little bit. It's still a great game. I absolutely love it. But, you know, it's just a port. I love the one for the uh, 3DO. Rogue Trip. From the million-selling million developer of Car Combat. Huh? Well, Single Track that developed this are the people that developed the original... Uh, the first two Twisted Metal games. And uh, Warhawk. And I love those games. So when they left to go off and do their own thing, they went right back into making uh, car combat games or vehicle combat games like uh, Critical Depth and this. And this one is... It's oh, it's good. It could have been a lot better. There's It's just more of the same you know you could tell they the reason they left the car combat genre and decided to make like critical depth with with uses completely different rules because it's underwater uh that they were running out of ideas and this kind of proves that that they are just kind of out so let's put a fat elvis impersonator in here <laughs> that's that's how we be creative i think the only thing really different about this game and the twisted metal games is like there's photo op places where you'll be like you'll be in front of like the the capitol building and you can like stop and there'll be like a little photo icon you can take a picture and get you some points but it's just another car combat game. Uh, I picked this up because of... Uh, oh, I cannot remember the name of the channel now because I haven't watched it in a while. I don't think that she's done anything recently either. <sighs> I cannot remember. British British YouTuber. Uh, Roll Cage, which is Cygnosis. This is the limited edition. and What makes it limited is it comes with a soundtrack. And then we have Roll Cage Stage 2, both by Cygnosis. Oh my god, that's going to drive me crazy trying to think of that person's name. British. British. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, whatever. Uh, it's a racing game. These are racing games. But the cool thing is, your character, the uh, car that you drive, their tires extend over the top of the car. So there's a lot of, like, tunnels that you can go through, like rounded tunnels. And you can go over them if you want. And you can also fall and land and your car will be upside down, but you'll still be able to drive because the wheels are touching the ground because they go they extend over your canopy. So it's kind of got this really cool 3D racing aspect to it. They're really fun. They got really awesome soundtracks. Obviously, the first one has a soundtrack of its own. Roscoe McQueen, Firefighter Extreme, another Cygnosis game. Like I said, I was buying every one of them. This is just a 3D firefighter game where you play as like... It's like a little kid's game, honestly, where you play as a firefighter. It's trying to be like... Um, What's that Saturn game I have? Burning Rangers a little bit, but not quite there yet. Another Cygnosis game. Look at all these Cygnosis games. There's another one coming up next, too. We have Sentient, which is a uh, uh, Resident Evil-style game, sort of. It's more exploration. It's like you're trying to solve a mystery. So it says, You are sent to the Icarus Space Station to investigate the outbreak of radiation sickness. Upon arrival, it, beco it quickly becomes evident that radiation sickness is the least of your worries. The captain has been murdered by a mysterious onboard assassin. A power struggle has ensued to see who will take over the ship, who, who is who take over, and the ship is careening dangerously toward the sun. Do you take the easy way out and save yourself, or take the more courageous route and save the entire ship? Your decision is to determine what happens in this unique sci-fi role-playing adventure. Unparalleled in-game artificial intelligence automatically randomizes subplots, so it's never the same game twice. And having something that's procedurally generated was very unique back in the day. Unique communication feature allows you to interact with other 60 characters, with over 60 characters. Characters react and express a variety of emotions based on your intercommunication and actions. 200 real-time rendered locations to explore. So it's got like Resident Evil style graphics, and it's more of an adventure mystery thriller type thing. And this, for some reason, the ship you're in looks just like the ship from uh, Sunshine. If you've ever seen that movie. And here we have another Cygnosis game, and I still haven't opened this one. I uh, got this dirt cheap, but it actually it is kind of a pricier game now that I think of it. Uh, so we have Sentinel Returns. This is a sequel to, I think, a PC game. And it's like a walking simulator, sort of, in, in first person. And you're trying to get to the center of this planet, or whatever it is. There's like this Sentinel that's like in this centralized location. You're really far away, and you just need to get there. And the thing about this makes me really, really... Eh. If, there, if I wasn't collecting games by Cygnosis... The reason I would have bought this is because the music is done by John Carpenter, the film director, the guy who did the music for the Halloween movies and Big Trouble in Little China and all that. His music is always fantastic, and it is great in this game. I rented it back in the day, and I absolutely loved it, even though it's a slower-paced game. But I wanted to get it again, and I still haven't opened it. <laughs> it shows you how often I play some of these. Shadow Madness, this is a RPG, I think. I haven't played this one either. 
Uh, deep involving storyline. Yeah, la, 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 la. yeah, I think this is another... This is an RPG with pre-render graphics. So it's trying to be like Final Fantasy 7 and 8. Um, and I remember everyone telling me that this one was actually pretty good. And I found it at half price books for like 10 bucks, So I picked it up. But I still haven't played it. Another thing knows this game. Jesus. And another one's next too. Shipwrecked. Uh, it's a pirate game in 3D by Cygnosis. Shadow Master, another Cygnosis game. This is a tank, first-person tank game. Uh, and <laughs> there's your little tank. Uh, and the graphics are absolutely fantastic, but the play control ain't the greatest. So, what's up, Snack Pliskin? Good old Jake Burton. You know what Jack Burton says at a time like this? What the hell? Uh, we have... Okay, so... I was talking about something that was related to this in the last pickup video, but I cannot remember what game I was referring to. Oh, it was um, All-Star Slam and D-Ball. Age Tech was releasing these like discount budget title games in Japan, and it was like a really popular series. They started to bring them out over here a little bit, and I know that All-Star Slam and D-Ball was one of them. It just didn't get included in it because you can't. they don't really have the name on here either. I can't remember what the title of these was in Japan. But here we have uh, Shooter Space Shot. Shooter was the genre. Space Shot is the name of the game. So, like, you would get all these games in this Shooter series that were, like, budget titles. And this is kind of like playing uh, Gradius. It's a uh, horizontally scrolling shmup. And it's okay. But they were, like, budget titles, so there weren't any fr frivolities. It wasn't, it wasn't a fancy-ass game. So here we have another one. We have another Shooter game. And this one is called Starfighter Sandvane. And this is a 3D shooter. It's kind of like... Uh, Sylphid, I guess. And it's like a budget title. It's not too bad. But they had other titles. There's like a sports, there's sports ones and there's, uh, action ones and stuff like that. I bought this because of, I don't know if you guys ever watched that channel, um, Continue. And they're told to play a specific game and then they play, they film themselves playing it for the first time. And they make fun of it, kind of like Mystery Science Theater 3000 while they're playing it. And they played this game... It's a licensed game and a bad one at that. Uh, they played this one and I had so much fun watching them play it that I wanted to own a copy of my own. And I found this at a Savers, which I think is a value village on the West Coast. Uh, so I found this at a thrift shop for like $3. And I was like, oh yeah, that's that game they were playing, wasn't it? I need to have that just because it was so much fun watching them. It's Shrek Treasure Hunt. It is not good. <laughs> but for $3, all right. Absolute classic, Silent Hill, the black-labeled version. Got this from Nintendo. I did a trade with him for a Vectrex game. I had my copy of Scramble uh, that came with it. That was the only one that came loose. So I traded that with him and a few extra dollars for Silent Hill. And classic horror game that is trying to suckle off of the Resident Evil teat and also etch out its own identity at the same time, which I really appreciated. Um, it doesn't really control like a Resident Evil game. It doesn't really feel like a Resident Evil game, but it's trying to get the Resident Evil audience. And it's a very unique horror title, and I love it. And I love this series, although I have not played past Part 3. And there are a lot of games in this series, so Jesus, I need to get on that. Sledstorm, it is a uh, snowmobile racing game like Road Rash. And it's actually really fun. I actually owned this back in the day, and I played through it a lot. And I really love the fact that the licensed music on it, one of them was Rob Zombie, so you can play it to Dracula, or Dragula, which I really enjoyed. Oh, shit, what the hell? I have two games stuck together. Oh, that's because this has got some residue on it. Crap. I picked this up when I was hanging out with Captain Algebra last December, and that is Small Soldiers, based on a movie that I'm pretty sure none of you remember. <laughs> Came out in the late-ish 90s, I think. Uh, by Joe Dante, it was, it's a variation of his own Gremlins movie, except this one's all about toys instead of little, little creatures. Uh, sentient toys that go crazy and start attacking humanity. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's actually a decent three, third, yeah, 3D action game. Uh, but it could have been a hell of a lot better. I didn't expect much from this. Even Captain Algebra was like, what's up, j -Love? Welcome back. Even Captain Algebra was like, when I bought this, was looking at me, he's just like, why are you buying that? You know it's not going to be good. I'm like, you never know. With a licensed game. It could either be really cool. It could be real crap. Most likely it'll be crap. But I was pleasantly surprised that that was not absolute garbage. Uh, Soul Blade. This is the original Soul Calibur. I do believe in the arcade this was called Soul Edge. But that name was trademarked somewhere. 
So when they brought it out to the home consoles, they had to rename it Soul Blade, which made no sense. But then they ended up just renaming the whole thing again when Soul Calibur came out for the Dreamcast. So whatever, but it is a 3D fighting game, and it is actually quite amazing. And if you love Soul Calibur, you need this in your life. That's where it all began. Way of the Samurai, and I do believe this series was still going in the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era. No mocap. The mocap and intros of Soul Calibur are great. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, it looks fantastic. I remember when I picked it up back in the day, I was just kind of like, wow, like, we're coming a long way. <laughs> like, this is pretty awesome. Like, it looked like it, like it was a computer-generated person, but it moved like a real person. It was really awesome. Uh, this is a uh, 3D Samurai game, and it's not really a fighting game. This is more of a beat-em-up. It's okay. I think I picked it up for, like, five bucks at uh, people, or not people play games. I keep wanting to say people play games. It's half price books. South Park, um, this is a first-person shooter in the South Park uh, cartoon universe, and it's not good. I had this for the Nint Nintendo 64 back in the day. For some reason, the Nintendo 64 version was slightly more expensive, but it was easier to find back in the day. I could never find the PlayStation version, which is the one I wanted, but no one had it. Everyone had the Nintendo 64 version, so I picked that up instead. It used the expansion pack. It's still playing a game on the Nintendo 64, and I hate that freaking controller, but yeah, it's a first-person shooter, and it is really boring, honestly, because you just fight the same exact enemy, like, for whatever, the first chunk of levels, you're fighting crazy turkeys, and then you're fighting, like, the genetic mutants that uh, the uh, Dr. Moreau character created, and all. It just, it just gets really repetitive really fast. I was talking about Nuclear Strike, the sequel to Soviet Strike. Well, here we have Soviet Strike. This, from the, see, but here's the thing. Since it had jumped consoles, because the original three Strike games came out on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, when it jumped to the PlayStation 1, it was they weren't going to put on here the sequel to Urban Strike, because they'd be like, well, where's that? I want that on the PlayStation. No, that's a Genesis and Super Nintendo game. So it just says here, from the creators of the Desert Strike trilogy. Same exact thing. You're in a helicopter, and you are shooting everything in an isometric view, except now in 3D. And there's live-action cutscenes, which are really craptastic. Here we have an import I picked up at the P at the uh, Midwest Gaming Classic last year, I want to say. Yeah, it was the first year that they were in the convention hall. Space Battleship Yamato. Other, other side, it's all in Japanese. Uh, but it's based on an anime that is really popular. And it is a 3D RPG, except it's all in Japanese. Why did I buy this if I can't understand it? I got it for two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I still had like my little spending money and I was just like, let's just buy little things I can, you know, waste this on. <laughs> I should probably should have just saved it and bought some lunch, but whatever. <laughs> Spawn the Eternal. It's a one-on-one uh, -on -one fighting game with Spawn characters. Is it? Or is that the other? No, that's the one for the Xbox. No, this is the beat-em-up. Spawn 3D beat-em-up. That's it. Uh, this is the one where he has the cape and he doesn't have the cape in the dreamcast one which is what gets me but that would have been hard to animate but yeah it's okay i play better spawn games i get confused here's this here okay the only reason i bought this is because Cygnosis, and i'm trying to get all the Cygnosis games i would have never bought this game in a million years i didn't even rent it back in the day spice world This I talked about in my Diamonds in the Rough on the PlayStation 1, and I highly recommend you, recommend you pick up a copy of Spider, the video game. It is awesome. You play as this tiny robotic spider moving through 3D environments. It's like 2.5D, I guess. Um, and it's really awesome. Like, you can replace your arms with machine guns, flamethrowers, poison throwers, and it's a platformer, and it is awesome. And the story is really sick and... Not sick, but it's, it's, it's kind of twisted and weird, like... You play as a scientist who was trying to create like this little robot spider and he controlled it with his mind, but these assassins came in and shot him while his brain was, a, uh, was connected to that spider and he died while connected and his consciousness went into the spider and he's trying to find a way to revive himself, you know, to get his mind back into his human body, even though his body's dead. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, this is kind of weird. This had a sequel on the Dreamcast, which I really liked. I did not realize that there was it was from another uh, based on another game. There was a sequel to another game, and that's Star Gladiator. 
Episode 1, Final Crusade. Uh, it's by Capcom. It's a 3D sci-fi one-on-one fighting game. It's okay. The characters are really weird. Some are super overpowered when compared to others. It's the same problem that I have with the sequel for the Dreamcast, that some characters are just way easier to play as, and when you fight against them and they're computer-controlled, they cheese you like you would not believe. Man, there's some characters in that that I have so many problems with. But it's a fun game, despite that. Star Ocean, the second story... Uh, we never got the original Star Ocean over here, which I do believe came out for the Super Nintendo, but we did get Part 2 for the PlayStation 1, and it's an RPG in outer space, you know, sci-fi RPG. Uh, Radical Reggie swears by this. I think this is Radical Reggie's favorite game of all time, and for good reason, the little bit that I played to make sure that the game uh, discs worked really, really impressed me, and I need to dedicate some time to playing that. So, you know, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, so back in the day, I bought this the day it came out, and... While it is cool, and it is fun, and it is of a genre which I really enjoy, I was a little disappointed in it, and I'll tell you why, and that is Star Trek Invasion. It's a Star Trek Wing Commander game. That gave me a freaking boner. <laughs> uh, I love Wing Commander, and I love Star Trek. Combine the two, oh. What disappointed me was, you play as like these little support craft in the game, and not like an actual starship. Which really disappointed me. But if you want to be like Wing Commander, you got to be fast and nimble and agile. So you got to play as one of these little attack craft and not an actual, you know, starship. Which kind of saddened me. But it's in the Star Trek universe and you get to see very familiar things and interact with characters that you'll remember. And it is really, really fun and well made. And graphically is kind of amazing. But I would have really liked to play as like the Excelsior or the Defiant or something like that. The Defiant would have been awesome. Star Wars Dark Forces. This is a first-person shooter in the Star Wars land. <laughs> uh, I think this is Dash... Is this Dash Rendar? No, Dash Rendar... Mm, Kyle Katarn. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle Katarn. Kyle Katarn, uh, the bounty hunter guy. It's actually really, really cool. It's just like playing Doom with, with a Star Wars skin over it. It's fantastic. And it was a PC game, got ported over. This makes me laugh. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. It has a bonus that has the Duel of Fates music video included on it. Oh, yay, happy day. I hate this movie. I absolutely hate it. Uh, I have Disney Plus now, and I was, like, going through the movies that they have, and I saw that they had the first movie streaming, and I was like, God, I haven't watched episode one in probably 15, 16, maybe 17 years. Probably more. I probably haven't watched it since, since two, so almost 20 years. And I tried watching it. Like a week ago, and I couldn't do it. I watched the fight scene at the end between Darth Maul, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon, and I pretty much turned it off right after that. I can't really, I can't deal with that movie. It's so bad. Uh, but the game kicks its ass. Believe me when I say, this is head and shoulders above that game. It's a uh, 3D, top-down, kind of Legend of Zelda-esque action-adventure game where you play as Obi-Wan or Qui-Gon. I think it's only, no, you can play as both. And it's fun. It's actually really fun and really well made. Uh, LucasArts did not skimp on making sure that this actually played really well. And if it did not play well, I would not have liked it. Derp. Oh, this thing is going to tip over, I swear to God. Okay, another one. And this was featured in my Star Wars games, The Bad, that I did when Episode Seven, you know, Force Awakens was about to come out. I did a video about bad Star Wars games and good Star Wars games to celebrate Force Awakens. I'm going to do the exact same thing where I'm going to have more good and bad Star Wars games coming out right I'll, 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 next month before uh, Rise of Skywalker comes out. This was in my bad video. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with Star Wars characters. And not only does it look like crap and play like crap, but there's just stupid shit going on all over this game. Um, so I can play as Luke Skywalker, who was armed with a lightsaber, against a stormtrooper who can block said lightsaber with his, with his uh, forearms. It was just not a good idea. This does not... Star Wars is not a fighting game. Like, it does not lend itself well to that genre at all. It's stupid. Yes, you can unlock Mara Jade, which is a character from the Extended Universe, which is awesome. But there's also other characters you can unlock, like... Oh, what was... I can't remember his name. But there was, like, a, a really... There was a discolored Boa Fett. And, um... Oh, there was someone else, too. There was two other, two other hidden characters you can unlock. It's not a good game. Not at all. Jodo Cast, I think, was the Boba Fett ripoff. 
This one's awesome. I have the original game for the 3DO. It also came out for the Sega CD. It was kind of like one of those full motion video games where you're watching a pre-rendered movie and you're playing over it like as a shooter. It was an in-the-screen in the shooter of Star Wars. It was Rebel Assault. We have Rebel Assault 2 Hidden Empire. This one is not like that. It's still the same type of game, but everything is now, you know, done in-game and not just a pre-rendered movie playing over everything. With live-action cutscenes and everything, this is the first live-action anything shot for Star Wars since Return of the Jedi, which was kind of like a big deal at the time. The first live-action footage for anything Star Wars since Return of the Jedi. I picked this up at People Play Games when they were shutting down, and I still haven't played it, so I cannot tell you what kind of a game this is, and I think it's actually a racing game. Yeah, Starwinder, the ultimate space race. I got this for like three bucks, and it's by my favorite company of all time. Mindscape. Rebel Assault! What's up, Jason? You thought what was alright? Rebel Assault 2? Uh, this is a racing game. Real-time rendered 3D universe with six-axis flight control. Race against the galaxy's most dangerous drivers on over 50, 40 different space rails. Hmm. So, I picked this up because it was cheap. I still haven't played it. I enjoy Rebel Assault. Those are fun games. This one... Is not. And it's another Mindscape game. Oh, two in a row. Oh, two for two. Steel Harbinger. Um, I convinced my boss that we needed to have a copy of this for rental when I was working at that video store in the mid-90s. And he agreed with me. And this game never rented, except for the one time when I rented it. And I rented it and played it, and it was not good. So, uh, my boss did not like me for a while because I was having very bad luck with picking things that we needed to put up for rent. Um, it's like a 3D action beat em up style game and it is just really badly made. Like most of the things from Mindscape's, uh, library. Uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. This game owned my life back in the day. My friends and I played this nonstop. Like, it was, we were always playing the versus mode. Me and my friend Charlie and everybody, holy shit. I did. I made it like I would get the list of games that were that were going to be available and they would have like an A rating. Like there was the triple A games, the double A and the single. And you would always want to buy just the triple A games. I'm like, you can't just have those games, otherwise you're gonna be known as just the place that buys the things that you know are gonna be popular. You need to be the you need to be the guy that has like all the games available, you know, in order to get recognition as a good place to go for game rentals. And he was like, you know, okay, whatever. He just didn't want to spend the money because my boss at the video store was extremely cheap. And every time I would buy one of those single A games, no one would rent it. And I was like, well, you know what? You've got this very diverse library here. You know, there's something to be said for that. He goes, yeah, I'd rather just be making money off of it. <laughs> so, yeah, there was. he didn't trust me when it came to movies, and he didn't trust me when it came to um, the games. Sukadin, speaking of Jason, Sukadin, I got this from Jason. Uh, yeah, this is an RPG where, oh, God. He gave me this at the Midwest Gaming Classic this year. Um, it's an RPG where you can amass like a huge amount of people for your party, but you can only use like four of them at a time. And there's actually some funny shit going on here from uh, when I watched Hungry Gariah stream this. The whole Fusulu thing, uh, being a not a real tiger, it's fantastic. I need to sit down. Well, I want to get the rest of the games in the series before I sit down and put, some, put any time into that. Here we have a threefer. I should probably talk about this. Uh, Soul Divide picked this up at the Midwest Gaming Classic this year. It's a, uh, a shmup, uh, a horizontally scrolling shmup where you play as like an angel. And it's really weird because everything is like pre-rendered and it's kind of hard to control and it's not that much fun. And the thing was, I didn't realize that when I bought this at the Midwest Gaming Classic, because I thought this would be a unique game to, to, uh, to add to my collection. And it's strange. I already owned it because I bought the Psycho Collection volume one for my switch and this game is included on it so there's that so where did this fit in sol there we go right before soul blade there you go soul divide welcome now we can talk about the three fur we have siphon filter siphon filter two and siphon filter three um I've only played the first two and never had the third one back in the day, but the first one <clears throat> holds a special place in my heart because of the taser. And I'm pretty sure everyone will say the exact same thing, that the taser in this game is the most amazing thing ever added to video games. Uh, 
you can tase somebody with it. And normally, what does a taser do? It'll make it'll incapacitate somebody. You'll knock them out. If you keep tasing somebody in this game, you will set them on fire, and they will stand there and scream and twitch until you let go. And I would just hold that for 15 minutes because I was a sadist. <laughs> But these are um, third-person action games. There's a little bit of light stealth involved, but each one of them, you know, the storylines connect. They're pretty fun. And the series continued on the PSP, and then those ended up getting ported over to the PlayStation 2. This one's not good. <laughs> we have Taifu, Wrath of the Tiger. It's a third-person beat-em-up, in, or, yeah, 3D beat-em-up uh, with... Anthropomorph anthropomorphized animals in it. It's okay. Disney's Tarzan. Pick this up at a Goodwill for, I think, two and a half bucks. Um, it's okay. It's like a 3D platformer. It reminds me of Lion King, just done with 3D graphics. Uh, based on the movie, the Disney cartoon movie, which is not too bad. Yeah, the first siphon filter. The, the, I wish that... That's another one. I should make another one of those, you know, uh, video game franchises that need to make a comeback. Siphon filter would be on that list. Those were fun. Tempest X Cubed. I talked about this in my Diamonds in the Rough for the PS1 also. It's Tempest, which is, you know, Tempest. You know Tempest, the classic arcade game from the early 80s. Just made completely psychedelic for the 90s with techno music. And while this is supposed to be the third game in the series, hence the Tempest X Cubed thing, because you got Tempest, which is the arcade game, then you have Tempest 2000, which came out for the Jaguar, and then this... This is actually more just like a port of the uh, Jaguar game with the exact same music and levels and everything. And I think there was one bonus uh, stage that you can do that was not in the, ja the Jaguar version. Because I had a Jaguar and I, that was my favorite game for it was the original Tempest 2000. So the fact that they're considering this the third game in the series kind of doesn't make any sense to me. The same way that the fourth game that came out... Tempest 4000 that came out for the Xbox One and the PS4 is essentially the exact same game as this with the exact same music once again. So they're, they're trying to pull some shit. We got Tenchu Stealth Assassins and Tenchu 2 Birth of the Stealth Assassins. So you have the first game and this one is a prequel. Uh, 3D stealth games with ninjas and they're awesome. Uh, I haven't spent more a lot of time playing the second one, but I did play the first one quite a bit back in the day and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the, there's uh, the PSP game. Um, I think it's it's Someone's Shadow. That one's the port of the PSP one. And then there's an original one called like, the Omega Factor or something like that. And that's the original one that they made for the PS2. And that's where it ended. So we're just talking about Steel Harbinger kind of ruining my boss's faith in me when it comes to video games. Well, this was the one that really like put the nail in the coffin. <laughs> uh, Time Commando. Uh, I was trying, like I said, I was trying to get my boss to have a really cool collection of games for rent so that people could come in and be like, oh, my AAA game's not here? Well, you have all these other ones that look really cool. Why not? Omega Strain, that was it. Yeah, Logan's Shadow. Uh, this is kind of like playing Dragon's Lair almost with uh, 3D characters. It's not good. Not good at all. And like I said, the only person who rented this game when we got it in the store was me. My boss did not like me. <laughs> uh we had tokyo highway battle which is just a, another racing game like ridge racer it's okay i got that really really cheap at half price books okay so i don't have the first game in the series because i own it for the saturn so why would i want to get copies of the same game when you know they're basically the exact same thing so we have tomb raider 2 and tomb raider 3 uh tomb raider 2 is probably my favorite game in this classic tomb raider series Part 3 really turned me off on the series. I don't know why, but I played the shit out of Tomb Raider 2, which is more of the same, but made way better. Controls, graphics, everything was improved. Part 3, just to me, just seemed like they're on autopilot for some reason. So I couldn't get into this one as much as I got into Part 2. And then, like, you know how that went. Part 4 came out, which was, like, what, the last revelation, which is supposedly the last game, and then that sold like crazy. So we're going to keep the series going. We're going to make a prequel. The What was that? The Tomb Raider Chronicles? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow Never Dies. This is a third-person James Bond game. You would think that they would want to go first-person after the success of GoldenEye, but they didn't. Uh, and it's not too bad. It's actually pretty decent for a third-person shooter action game. This was on my Diamonds in the Rough for the PlayStation 1. Uh, Treasures of the Deep. Oh, I skipped the game again, didn't I? Mother puss bucket. 
Uh, Treasures of the Deep is an underwater adventure exploration shmup combo. Uh, you are in one of those submersibles. You can see it right here. And you're looking for treasure, but there's, you know, pirates around, and there's other submersibles, and giant sharks, and octopuses, and eels, and every danger you can possibly imagine under the sea. You eventually have to defuse a nuclear bomb. It's weird, but it's really, really fun. And this game gives me minor panic attacks because uh, of my fear of the ocean. So we'll talk about the game that I missed. And I've talked about the other two games in the series. Like I said, they're all over the alphabet. Tecmo's Deception, the first game in the series. You got, you got Tecmo's Deception. Then you have Kagero, Deception 2. Then Deception 3, Dark Deception. Then Trapped on the PlayStation 2. Then Deception 4, Blood Ties or Bloodlines or something like that. Uh, so Tecmo's Deception is the first game in the series, and it's the exact same thing, where you play as the villain, you live in a mansion, people are coming to kill you, so you have to kill them first. So you have to set traps all over the place, traps that will kill the people that are trying to break into your place, and the more people you kill, the more points you get, the better traps and whatnot you will get. It's super fun. But the second game is where it's at. Is it Tecmo? Tecmo goes there. There you go. Found a nice little cozy spot for you. So now we move on to Twisted Metal 2, Twisted Metal 3, and Twisted Metal 4. So like I was talking about Single Track, Single Track developed the first two Twisted Metal games. And Twisted Metal 2, while I love the first Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal 2 just took it to the next level. I spent so much time playing this back in the day. Yeah, there's like ridiculous characters here like Axel who has arm or tires for arms but it was just so much fun car combat done so well so much fun so many different things to unlock and everything it's fantastic but then they decided to move on and didn't want to make those types of games anymore so they brought in or what company was it sony brought in 989 studios to continue making the franchise what's up down phoenix how's it going yeah twisted metal 2 is one of the best games in that series although the ones that came out for the later consoles are pretty awesome too especially twisted metal black so they brought 989 Studios in to continue the series, including, I think it was uh, Twisted Metal Small Brawl, which I don't own. Uh, Twisted Metal 3 is not good. Not good at all. You could tell they didn't understand the way it worked, the way the first, what made the first game work. Um, it's just not well made, and that's what sucked. They really got their shit together for Part 4, because Part 4 is about as good as the first game. It's nowhere near as good as Twisted Metal 2. But it's about as good as the first game. They kind of really put their efforts into it to try to make this work. And they did. And it's fun. Yeah, they did. They tried to move away from it, but they couldn't. Because everyone was expecting them to do that type of game. They just didn't want to make any more Twisted Metal games. But yeah, they did Warhawk. And then they ended up doing Critical Depth and Rogue Trip, which I already talked about. Okay, so this is kind of a cool thing. So we have Umjammer Lammy, which is a spinoff of Parappa the Rapper. Featuring one of the characters who was in Parappa the Rapper. Um, and this one is all about rock music instead of hip-hop. And this is actually... I prefer this to Parappa the Rapper. I like the songs more. I like the rock vibe more. Um, and it's great. The storyline is fun. But I also have the Japanese version, which I got for a whopping $7.99 back in the... Uh, I think the early or the late 90s. And why did I want the Japanese version? Because there was a level omitted from the American version. Because it has uh, your main character... Lammy going to hell and having a rock battle against the devil. That was considered too risque for America, so they took it out of the game completely. And then I found this at a CD recyclery, which is like a used media store that used to be around back in the 90s. And I said, I gotta have that! Now I can play the game with the uncut... or the uncut game. I'm hoping that they will give a remaster treatment to Umjammer Lammy the way they still did with uh, Prep the Rapper and, and put that part back in. So pick a destiny. Yeah, they copied them, Jammer Lammy, yo. The Unholy War. I talked about this in my Diamonds in the Rough for the PS1 video. It's like playing Archon, uh, but in 3D. Uh, there's a pseudo sequel to this called Wrath Unleashed on the Xbox. Uh, so it's like a you're kind of it's not like you're playing chess, sort of. And then when you take someone else's spot, you have to fight over, it, and you literally have to control your people as they fight. And it's really awesome. I love these types of games. Like Archon. Archon is one of my favorites. Vampire Hunter D. I absolutely love the anime. I read one of the books and like the million books that came out in Japan with the, you know, the, about this character. 
But I love the two anime movies, especially the second one. Uh, Bloodlust is absolutely amazing. Saw that in the theater. Uh, but it's a third-person hack-and-slash, beat-em-up type game where you're playing as D. And it's not too bad. You would think that this would be just some cheap-ass cash-in, but was anybody really asking for a Vampire Hunter D game? Was he so well-known that we were clamoring for one? No, so there were no expectations on the developers. So, it's actually pretty decent. I was just watching Tesseract Unfolded streaming this last night on Twitch. Vandal Hearts, it's a real-time strategy game that came out before uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. And Final Fantasy, Fantasy Tactics kind of like showed you what a RPG tactical game needed to be. Uh, this game is just kind of one note and kind of overly linear, which is what uh, Tesseract was saying last night. But it's not too bad. I got this off of Facebook, I want to say. Yeah, I think I got this off Facebook when I was first getting back into collecting. And I got it pretty cheap. I want to say I paid like 25 bucks for it. Here is another import. This one is Vib Ribbon. Never came out over here. It's another rhythm game. I was huge into rhythm games back in the 90s. So this is the original copy that I bought off of eBay in the early, early 2000s. Uh, and the thing about this is each face button, like the circle, the triangle, the square, and the X, controls a specific movement that your character does. And those movements are to correspond with a, an obstacle that's going to be in your path. Because your character is kind of walking along a straight line. And everybody is like ribbon, like, well, it's like vector graphics almost. You see how he looks. And there'll be like a bump. And if you want to jump over the bump, you got to hit like circle. And there'll be a dip in the road. And to jump over that, you got to hit square. And it's all done to rhythm. And then it just keeps piling those things up over and over until it's like this crazy button combination you got to do to beat it. And it takes some practice, but it's actually super fun. I was surprised that this never got ported over to the U.S. I think it would have actually been a pretty decent hit. OGD to Bloodlust, both are good. Yeah, I, I like the first one too, but I think I like the more action-oriented nature of the second one. I like the characters in the second one more too. TNA the video game, also known as VIP. <laughs> Can you stand Pamela Anderson as polygons? Look at those triangular boobies. It's not good. <laughs> Okay, we got here, I have pretty much every single game from this franchise, and I never really had any intention of going out and buying these. I just keep coming across them. That came out on PSN? Wow, it's actually really worth it. Uh, so I keep coming across these games, and because my friends actually play the tabletop version of this, I keep buying them. And I remember wanting this one back in the day, but it was always really expensive. I got it dirt cheap on eBay. Uh, Warhammer. No, I got this at Half Price Books. Warhammer, Shadow of the Horned Rat. This is a real-time strategy game in the Warhammer universe. Really complicated, just like anything by CC SSI. CCI, what the hell? <clears throat> Pretty decently sized manual. I don't understand why this came into, into like one of this double CD thing. The manual isn't that thick that it requires it, but whatever. It's okay. Uh, we have this because I got this because of name only. War Games. There's actually a video game based on War Games. Defcon 1. And this is a... It reminds me a lot of Return Fire that came out on the uh, 3DO and also came out on the PS1 and the uh, Saturn. Where it's just a, a war skirmish game. You play as... You can play as a... What is it? A helicopter? A gunship? Helicopter, obviously. A battleship or a heavy walker. Uh, yeah. It's okay. And here's another Warhammer game. Warhammer Dark Omen, another real-time strategy game. Instead of keep coming across those, I don't know why. I have, like, I have Warhammer games for almost every console out there now. Like, the new ones are still coming out for the new consoles. Uh, Warriors of Might and Magic. I think this has a subtitle, too, doesn't it? No, just Warriors of Might and Magic? Okay. Yeah, this is a 3D fantasy beat-em-up. It's okay. And we have the... Wild Arms and Wild Arms 2. I don't have every game in the series. I think I'm still missing part 3. Um, yes, yeah, uh, Western sci-fi RPGs. They're pretty cool. PR. What do you mean by... Oh, is, oh pretty good. Okay. Um, I wanted to get this, like, the third game in this series is my one of my favorite games on the uh, 3DO. So, when I found out that the next game in the series is going to be coming out for the PS2, or PS1, I jumped on it the day this came out. 
And I was sort of disappointed, actually. You'd think I wouldn't be, but I was, because I don't think I liked the way the story developed and uh, just the way the game, like the, the gameplay was. I don't know why. I just, I couldn't get into this one as much as I got into Part 3. We're talking Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom. Sure, it has all the same actors from the previous game, you know, uh, Mark Hamill, Michael McDowell, uh, John Rhys Davies and all that. But for some reason, like, it was like the, the Kilrathi War was over at the end of Part 3. We destroyed their homeworld. Uh, so where do you go for a fourth game? Do you even need a fourth game? Apparently Part 3 sold so much, they did. And it's just kind of like, now we're going to fight ourselves. Like, the story just really didn't do anything to me, so I couldn't get into this one as much as the, for the third game. Not to say it's bad, it's just, I just, like I said, I couldn't get into it. Wipeout XL and Wipeout 3... And the funny thing is, Wipeout 3 really shouldn't be Wipeout 3, because I found out that Wipeout XL is just a enhanced version of the first game. Uh, they made some, vi some graphical tweaks, some play control tweaks, and some extra music tracks were added, a couple of extra tracks. And it's the exact same game as the first one. So, technically, Wipeout 3 should be Wipeout 2. Whatever. Uh, but, yeah, Psygnosis games, obviously. Um, and these are just futuristic racing games like uh, F-Zero. With awesome techno soundtracks. Futuristic racing game with 90s techno. They're in a retro in those games, man. The World is Not Enough. This is nothing like The World is Not Enough that came out for the Nintendo 64. That one was a third-person action game, and this one is a first-person action game. It's okay. It's not the greatest thing ever. This is awesome, though. I absolutely... I need to get the controller that comes along with this. In, uh, I think it's only available in the UK, but I need to get it. It looks like the most uncomfortable controller ever, but I think I need it just for shits and giggles. Yeah, you ain't kidding, dude. I have like 300-something. Uh, we're talking Wu-Tang Shaolin style. <laughs> There's actually a controller in the shape of the Wu-Tang W for the PlayStation 1 so you can play this game. I think I need that in my life. I need to track down one. I don't think I'd be able to use it. Remember Kenna Suckers? Kenna forever in our hearts. He's right here. Um, this is also one of the four-player fighting games that got developed out of the wreckage of Thrill Kill. Um, Thrill Kill, I was talking about in the last uh, PlayStation video that it was going to be this like four-player fighting game, one -on -one, like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game in 3D with four players simultaneously that was going to be the most bloody violent thing ever released and it got so much controversy that it got canceled but the game ended up being turned into this <laughs> they just toned it down threw the Wu-Tang license on it uh, put a couple of exclusive Wu-Tang tracks in here the car the uh, rappers from the band are in here playable and it's actually a really fun game it's just I wish it was I wish Thrill Kill was still a thing though uh, and other games try to emulate that, like, uh, what was it, Cardinal Sin, and there's one other game I have that had eight players simultaneous in a fighting game. Can you imagine eight players at once? My brain would explode. Xeno Warrior Princess. I can't do the fucking sound she made. <laughs> uh, it's a 3D adventure game, uh, third person. It's okay. It could have been a hell of a lot better. The one on the Nintendo 64 is actually a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with characters from the show. I kind of think I need to own that, even though I hear it's not that great. Uh, but the cool thing about this is when you throw the chakram, the camera is right on top of it, and you follow it everywhere it goes. It is pretty awesome. The controller is kind of expensive, and it's only available in the UK. I don't think it'll work over here on a US PlayStation. Um, but look it up on eBay. You'll see what it looks like, and you'll be like, wow, that was a thing. But I still think I need it in my life. I hope I can find one at the Midwest Gaming Classic. <laughs> So I saw you beat uh, Contra 3 last night, Cap. Congratulations. Did you do it on uh, hard yet to get the true ending? The true ending. Uh, this I got from Jason. This just showed up on my doorstep one day. Um, Jason just sent it to me because he's awesome. Uh, I think you know what you're talking about, Jason. Or what I'm talking about. Xenogears. Someone asked me the last stream, do you have Xenogears? I'm like, you're going to have to wait for part two, sucker. Uh, it's a sci-fi RPG from Squaresoft. There's... I do want to say that the Xeno Saga is like a spinoff of this. Not yet. We'd be working on that soon. Um, so I haven't played it. I kind of want to get all the other games in the series. But the one thing that I remember the most about this was that... Well, I remember a couple of my friends were playing this and I tried to avoid watching them play because I wanted to play it myself at some point. That they uh, ran out of money 
toward the end of the development of the game. So the ending is just kind of like tied up really quick uh, because they couldn't finish it properly. And the last game, the last game, X-Files. This is a uh, point and click adventure with full motion video with exclusive footage shot with all the actors from the show. Every single one of them. You got uh, David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson and uh, the guy that played Skinner. I cannot remember his name. The guy that played the smoking man. All of them are in here. And it is such a big game that it is on one, two, three, three di four discs. So much, for, so much footage was shot for this. And it's actually really cool. It's like a procedural mystery thriller type game, but point and click. Highly recommend it. I got this at half price books, I think, for fifteen bucks, and I couldn't pass it out. Or couldn't pass it up. Couldn't pass it out. <gasps> and that's the last game for the PlayStation. Woo! It's a lot of talking, and I never had anything to drink. I don't. I'm not, I'm not a, one of your tea bros tonight, Cap. I didn't bring my uh, my my iced tea over here. I totally forgot to grab something to drink. My throat is like dry as shit right now. Uh, so I did it. I did this tonight because obviously I'm not going to do this on Thanksgiving. No one's going to watch it. <laughs> uh, but I will be back on Saturday with my monthly pickup live stream. That's not going to be very long either because I have not been buying a whole lot of stuff. Although the only reason I will have stuff to talk about is because I did a little bit of Black Friday shopping over last weekend, and all that stuff showed up yesterday. So I actually have games I can show off. <laughs> They're all new stuff. No retro. Not a lot of retro stuff this month. But, you know, I haven't, I haven't really been collecting a whole lot. Times have been tough. Um, and I'm going to try to have the fourth movies that would make great video games collab out by this weekend. I'm about, I'm more than halfway through it. Finding time to work on it has been incredibly hard. Um, I keep on saying, you need to sit down and take care of this shit, Chris. And then I say that all day. And then when I get home, I got so much crap I got to do that I can't. And by the time night shows up and everyone starts streaming, the people that I like will watch streaming, you know, it's too late. I don't want to sit there and I'll fall asleep at my computer. <laughs> so I'm going to dedicate tomorrow and Friday to doing that. So um, on top of that, I'll be back next week with another live stream back to the regular Thursday schedule. And what console will I be talking about? Mm, I already did Nintendo 64. I already did the Saturn. Uh, we've got the uh, PlayStation 1 out of the way. Hmm, could it be the Dreamcast? I think so. Hmm. So yes, I'll be back next week, and I'll probably have to split that into two also, because like everybody knows, I'm trying to get a complete Dreamcast set. It's something I thought I would have done by the beginning of my collecting, you know, because I had a lot of the major things out of the way at the beginning. I've just been constantly forgetting about it, and one of the things I need to do is just freaking bite the bullet and just go after all these damn commons that I need to fill out the con the uh, the set. Uh, but the Dreamcast is a fantastic system. I know a lot of people whine about it, but honestly, you haven't played the good games yet. There are a ton of them. So next week will be the beginning of my Dreamcast streams. So hope you come back for that. And uh, thank you guys for coming by to get them all at MGC. I tried last year. I found one common there. Everything else was the major big stuff that I already own. So that was a bust. I found one game that I didn't have. That was a common. This is going to have to be some eBay shit. Because I don't even find uh, Dreamcast games in the wild by me anymore. Like, and it's always stuff that I already have. So, yeah, finding these commons that nobody wants doesn't look like anybody's selling them either. I have to do it all on eBay. So that's kind of a, being a pain in the ass, but whatever. So, yeah, come back next week. I hope to have the uh, new collaboration out by this weekend. And then on Saturday I will have the collection live stream or the uh the pickup live stream going on and i will put up a reminder for that so thank you everybody for coming by and chatting with me watching me talk about some playstation one goodness uh i'll talk to you guys next time and chris the old ass retro gamer signing off have a good night everybody